Hi everyone, Cindy Olin here. How's your day? Happy Friday. It's not the first Friday of the summer, but I was just thinking it's close. Anyway, let me know if you guys are live or if you are watching the replay. So I'm going to dive right into our topic today. Hey, Tina, Tom, modern warrior, warrior, I can't even talk today, tribe. Hey, Instagram. So I got Instagram over here. I'm trying to keep you guys kind of together. But um, anyway, so I really just want to dive right in because, um, well, for several reasons, but let me know if you have any questions, comments below, anything when it comes to dating a relationship, I am here for you. And, you know, know that I want to support you in really creating your luck in love <laughs> and really creating the kind of relationship that you deeply desire. So, um, you know, please feel free to put thumbs up hearts, anything. Are you, actually I have a quick question. Are you more on Instagram? Are you more often on Instagram or are you more often on, um, on Facebook? I'm just curious. So two questions, watching it live, watching the replay. Or are you more often on Facebook or Insta? I'm just curious for my own little market research. So have you ever felt like when you're in a place when you're dating and you're, you know, things are moving along and then all of a sudden there feels like there's, oh, I'm so happy to see you live here, Lori, Nat, Patricia. Wow, a lot of you guys on here today. Everybody's watching Facebook and Insta. Okay. So anyway, things are going along and then all of a sudden it's like there's a block, there's a wall that comes up, right? And maybe the wall is not you, but maybe the wall is something preventing you from feeling close to this individual. Now, and that could be a number of things. It could be that, you know, early on when you start dating, or you start getting to know someone, you don't feel as um, attached to what the outcome is. And then when you become closer to them, there may, there may be a feeling of a deeper attachment as to where is this going? What does he want? Why is he pulling away, right? So I work with my clients and my programs, Infinite Love and, um, and my Love VIP program around um, uncovering what, what things are that might be holding you back from actually having the success in either partnership or relationship that you desire. So some of those things are, I like to keep these pretty simple and feel free to ask me any questions or comments too because this weekend I am doing um, direct message coaching so so and what that means is just send me a direct message and anytime this weekend I will I will um, email coach you and support you around a challenge you may be having and um, you know, my goal is really to help you to break through anything that might be in your path. And it could even just be a simple little tweak, right? So the three things that I want to talk to you about is a lot of times what I know about women is, and not all women are like this, so I'm, I'm not trying to put, you're welcome, Lori. Um, I'm not trying to put, you know, any thoughts or ideas in our pathway, but a lot of times with women, what I've seen is they 
do really well in the beginning because they're, you know, still doing the things that they're passionate about, whether that be yoga, their meditation class, whatever they're, whatever you're into, right? Getting together with friends. And then as things seem to progress, life can take on a different form with the partner. So it becomes like the man becomes your identity or if the only time if the only time that he can get together are Wednesdays and Friday nights and you have a Wednesday night class that you absolutely love oops sorry face sorry insta um and you decide to do this thing that's, you know, I called almost melding yourself into what, um, into his schedule. Now, I'm not to say that, that, you know, we, we don't want to negotiate our schedules or our time together as things progress in a relationship. And that can be discussed, right? But, you know, if you're, if you're taking on more of his life, then what happens is the relationship actually loses what I refer to as tension. It, it, it loses its appeal because a man actually senses it, whether you tell him or not that you're skipping your favorite class or whatever, that you're actually not valuing yourself on a higher level. And you weren't, you actually changed from the woman that he became really attracted to in the beginning. So, um, and you know, this can happen. I was talking to, you know, I was talking to one of my clients, um, the other day about, you know, she will start dating and get really attached really quickly. And it's not so much about that person because, frankly, you don't really know them that well. What it's more about is being attached to the idea of what our perceived idea of relationship is. And then that becomes a fantasy, right? So, and then what happens is the, these relationships, some of them can go hot and heavy and then they end really quickly. And... Or they, you know, or they just end up fizzling out or, you know, it's, there becomes a shift in the way he shows up for her. So I've seen this a lot too, a shift of the way he shows up for her. So he sh starts showing up less and then she feels like, okay, I've got to prove myself. I've got to, you know, do all the work to actually have the kind of relationship that I want. And... None of that is true. So if you're experiencing some frustration, you might be a little bit hard to love, which might mean that you shut down. You actually have a really hard time connecting with your own wants, needs, and desires. And I get this, ladies, because that's been a challenge of mine in my life too. Um, and how to express yourself because we get caught up in perfectionism. Or there's a shutdown that happens when there's an emotional trigger, okay? So there's a shutdown that happens when there's an emotional trigger. There could be a really quick attachment happening. And the shutdown, I actually wanna talk about that a little bit more with an emotional trigger. So I, I was actually talking to another client of mine yesterday, lots of client calls yesterday, and she's an amazing woman. She's, you know, she's incredibly successful. She's a great mother and she's dating someone right now that is, um, you know, that's starting to show up a little less for her. So we started to talk about some of the things that were happening and she 
opened up to me that when she started feeling triggered, she would actually create a story about what he's doing in her mind and inadvertently shut down and start to punish him. That's what we came up with, right? So he's men, and I talk about this all the time, you guys, right? Men really are connected to the ability to make you happy. So if he doesn't feel like he could actually make you happy or he starts seeing evidence around the fact that he's not really making you happy or he, start, he stopped making you happy, and men aren't always good at um, asking the question or, or if he is good at asking the question, sometimes when we're in that mode of feeling triggered, we'll shut down. And and not actually be conscious of answering it in an honest way, maybe because of our own fears. So our own fears, which are which is our mask, makes us really hard to love, right? It, not all of them, right? But but it can make us hard to love. Our own fears can manifest into isolation. It can manifest into, you know, creating all kinds of stories for ourselves that are more than likely not true. So if we stop and go, what do I really desire? Maybe I desire a deep, loving, connected partnership. So what's been happening for me around that? Why, you know, I work with clients all the time that, you know, when we first start working together, some of them aren't, you know, meeting high quality men or they're, you know, they're, they're saying that, you know, everybody on dating sites are not looking for anything serious, right? So these are actually fabrications or creations because frankly, there are people everywhere and there are events everywhere. So there's all kinds of ways to meet people. And what I'll tell you this, um, I'll tell you this, thank you for the compliment on my eyes, um, is that if, if you think about how children are, right, you know, little kids, they, you know, I have this adorable little four-year-old that, you know, will scream, laugh, cry. He doesn't care where he does it. Um, but he'll fall down. He'll hurt himself. He'll get back up. He won't care what he looks like when he does that. And our masks say, well, you know, I need to execute this perfectly. I need to, you know, if I don't, you know, if I'm not having sex with him, he's going to stop calling me, right? If I'm not, and when in fact, when you learn how to go into this place of opening up your mask, opening up like what's really true for you and your deep desires, it, it becomes easier to actually create a deeper connection with a man and, and when we become really conscious of the triggers. So the triggers are really important. And learning how not to make them triggers anymore. Learning how to not let them affect us. Now, I get it. I get triggered all the time. But I've learned how to really unhook from them quickly so that I don't allow it to take up space in my life so that I can open up for deep connection and love. So you guys, I hope this has been helpful. Please feel free to write your questions, comments below. And look, be vulnerable because one of your questions or comments could actually help someone else to... Um, you know, unhook from a story that they're telling themselves or um, really help them to connect deeper with their soulmate that they're with currently. So anyway, let me know. I love your questions. I love your comments, guys. And again, I am, I am email coaching 
all weekend long. So can't wait to hear from you. Sending so much love. Now I might be email coaching from the beach. I'm just saying because it's pretty gorgeous here in San Diego. But have an amazing rest of your day. And I will see you guys back in action on Monday. Mwah, mwah. Bye.